morning. Good morning and welcome. What a wonderful time of <laughs> celebration that we have today. And um, today at Lover's Grove, it's going to be all about baptism. We're starting the service with it. And then uh, there's some things about baptism that need to be said. And the one thing is, Don gets to preach his first sermon today. <laughs> <laughs> Not literally with words, but with actions. <laughs> <laughs> so, That's what baptism I'm is a demonstration of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. And when we align ourselves with Jesus, we have been asked as a people to baptize others as they come and join us in the faith. So today, Dominic has come to say, I know Jesus is my Savior, and uh, I need you on this side, and we're going to go this way. And if I can't get you up, it's your it's up, it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> I thought the water would be a little bit deeper. <laughs> so, uh, but uh, Dominic, is it true that you have come to Jesus and you said to him, I want you to be my savior and I want you to be the boss of my life? Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Somebody ought to say hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> But, so, this is, is such an incredible symbol of what Jesus has asked us to be. As It's not really beginning, because he's been saved for a long time. And he's demonstrated his love for Jesus. He's demonstrated his love for the church and its people. But he's coming today in obedience to what Jesus has asked us to do in following Jesus' example. We'll say more about that later. I'll just stand up here and start preaching. So, <laughs> well, that'll work. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm gonna... <laughs> Dominic, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. For we are buried with Christ in baptism. <laughs> And raised to walk in a brand fantastic new life. Amen. 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 A milestone for my four and a half years of being here. Amen. And what a glorious time I would ask Caleb to join us in the baptistry because I just thought it was so appropriate for his father. And uh, we debated on maybe doing it together or, or let him do it. But. Uh, they elected for me to baptize him, but anyway. You got him up. <laughs> <laughs> Thank the Lord. <laughs> Jerry Perry, would you lead us in a word of prayer? Our dear Heavenly Father, we just come together today to witness this event that is taking place here. And Lord, we just pray that you be with Dom throughout his walk of faith and the power that he has with other people and the things that he has accepted to be. Lord, we just ask you to forgive us of all the things that we do that we don't even know we're doing. Or we ask these things in your name. Amen. 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 Sing a praise unto the Lord. Let's all stand. If you can, if not, sit down. Yeah. 
you for Dominic. He is a blessing in this church. He's a blessing in the community and his family. And we thank you for his family for raising such a fine and rose. We ask, Lord, that you be with this country. We ask that you be with our border patrol. Keep them safe. And be with all those who have been terrorized on the border. We pray for their safety, Lord. We ask these things in his name. Amen. 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 Y'all be seated. We're just going to sit down again. Don't mean you can't sing. <laughs> we're going to sing while we're sitting down. Around the solid rock. My hope is built on nothing less than.
<laughs> and hallelujah. <laughs> What a great morning. We were listening to some stuff this morning and just kind of talking about all the wonderful things that the Lord's doing. And Bob started playing a song just on his phone. And I just decided I needed to do it this morning. You get to listen while I uh, do it for me. Thank you. 
such a milestone in our life as we make a declaration to the world that we come to know you and what you've offered us as we tell the world with such a great thing that you have put into place the word called baptism and I pray that as we move through these few words that you've given me to say Lord that it would all bring glory to you. Oh, my, my sweet Jesus, that you would be glorified and I would be made small. As we speak your word and speak of you, we ask you to bless it in a mighty way in Jesus' name. Amen. Bible. Amen. It's a New King James Version study Bible, and I mean it is a study Bible. I believe I read that it has over 15,000 references. Wow. I mean, you open the Bible, and this is scripture, and this is all commentary down here, so uh, I'm a little bit jealous. I really like it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Anyway, Amen. and you notice that we kind of have a look-alike thing yeah, going on here? Yeah. 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 yeah this, I, was, I decided, <laughs> Betty helped me pull it off, of course, uh, that we could uh, sort of be a little bit twins, but we we're also making a statement. Yeah. Because yeah. we've been made new by Jesus Christ and the Amen. blood that he shed for us. I bless you, buddy. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> I forgot. There's one more thing. There's a card. <laughs> Signed by everyone. No money, just a card. Then <laughs> 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 God good. Amen. What a Amen. what a wonderful blessing we get to share in Dom's joy. He's long been giving us demonstration of his faith and today was not just a demonstration it was a declaration and so i want to share some things with you today matthew 3 13 through 17 is a very familiar passage and then we'll be jumping over to Romans 6, 1 through 4 here in a bit. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. You know, as many times as I've read that, that he went there for a specific purpose. I mean, I always believed that, but I never really realized that it said that in the scripture. I don't know how I missed it all these years, but he went to the Jordan to be baptized. Don came to church today to be baptized. And he said to John, John would have prevented him saying, I need to be baptized by you. Do you, and do you come to me? 
And Jesus answered him, saying, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented, and when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, important phrase, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Jesus set the example. But you know, baptism was not new to the Jewish culture. They did it as a ritual of purification at times. And so they, and many religions baptize for various reasons. Uh, and by religions, I don't mean uh, necessarily denominations, but other abs, uh, actual religious sects. So, and then, let's go ahead and read Romans chapter 6, verse 1 through 4. What shall we say then? Are we to continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. How can we who died to sin, sin still live in it? Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of God the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. Well, we have a few things to share today, and, and I've kind of outlined them with uh, the letter P. The purpose of baptism. Why are we baptized? Well, Jesus gave us an example. We just read about that. But in John 4, 14 and 21, Jesus said, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. One version says you will do what I say. And we know that in Matthew 28, Jesus said, go and teach and disciple them. Now I realize it doesn't use the word there. It does, in one version, it does say go and make disciples of all nations. But Jesus said go everywhere, don't leave any stone unturned, but go everywhere and tell them what I have done for the universe, for all of the people every, uh, that have ever lived. So get, go and teach them what I've told you to teach them and then teach them to follow through and Part of that follow-through, the beginning of the follow-through is being baptized. So the purpose of it, plain and simple, really, is we're just doing what Jesus said to do. Baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. There is a proper time to be baptized. A lot of people baptize for various reasons at different times in people's lives because they think that the water washes away the sin. <laughs> I can't find that anywhere in Scripture. It talks about the washing of water by the Word. We are cleansed <laughs> from all unrighteousness <laughs> because Jesus paid the price. We must trust him. Once a person has declared their salvation in Jesus, then it's time to be baptized. Not in order to be a Christian or to be saved. Some would disagree with that. 
They're still my brothers and I love them. And that happens when John 10, 9 and 10 that we talked about uh, last week uh, or a couple of weeks ago. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Christ was raised from the dead and you will be saved. Then it's time to be baptized. You remember when the eunuch was talking with Philip. And he said, here is much water. What hinders to me? What, what is hindering me from being baptized? Well, Philip explained to him that baptism was something that needed to be done only if he would accept Jesus Christ and ask Jesus for his acceptance into the family of God. Is there a place? Yeah, there's a place to be baptized wherever there's enough water to be immersed. I personally have baptized people in rivers, creeks, swimming pools, and a baptistry or two. But the place is not sacred until you come there to be baptized for the proper reason. I, I remember watching a movie recently about the Jesus movement and watching people being baptized in the, I guess it was the Pacific Ocean. It doesn't matter. I have a picture of my dad standing before a, a bombed out half track of some sort upside down in the edge of the water uh, in off the South Sea Island uh, or the the island of Saipan, as he in the Pacific Ocean is baptizing two Marines, because he was attached to the Marine Division there on Saipan, uh, and uh, it's it's a glorious picture. We we love to have it displayed all the time because it this it symbols that the place is only sacred when baptism happens because it's all about Jesus. I think there's a church and the interesting thing in, in churches have their baptismals in lo different locations. There's a church in Perryton that you have this, the stage area here and the baptismal is over here <coughs> off to the side. It doesn't matter where it is. At least they got one, right? <laughs> and then uh, I believe it's Marble Falls, uh, First Baptist Church Marble Falls, has theirs out, their baptistry is actually out in the foyer, uh, and it's more like a fountain type thing. Place doesn't matter, as long as you do it in the name of Jesus, and because you know Jesus as your personal Savior. But the most important thing about baptism is the picture. Because it's a picture of all of the, it encompasses all that we believe about Jesus. If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, the death of Jesus, the burial of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, that's why it's important to be immersed when you're baptized because it's a symbol, it's a demonstration, a picture of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ and that we associate ourselves with that. Not only do we associate ourselves with it, we trust in it, rely on it, and believe in it with all of our heart. <laughs> Now, don't get me wrong. I love that song, Pray for the Fish. Anybody doesn't know that song? I'll have to play it for y'all sometime. But uh, the song implies that you better pray for the fish because when somebody gets baptized, the fish are going to have to run for their life because of all that sin in the water. 
it, it, it's really a funny, fun song. Pray for the fish. And the next thing that baptism is, as I've already mentioned from the baptistry, is that it's a proclamation. Declaration, proclamation, whatever you want to say, that you have aligned yourself with the ways of Jesus Christ and what he has said to do. You're aligning yourself with him because you're, been, you're doing it before witnesses and you're making a declaration to the world of your decision to follow Jesus Christ and him alone. And you're sharing your faith in others. And for many people, baptism is sharing your faith for the first time. Don's been sharing his faith with us for a long time. And another symbol that I think is so important, Jesus said, I've cleansed you from all unrighteousness. There's no more penalty for sin because you are now considered in the eyes of God to be pure. Amen. Some of us are still working on acting like it, okay? But Jesus has declared that we are free from the penalty of sin. We have been purified by the blood of Jesus Christ. And that's the only way for salvation to happen. You are saying that you have resigned from being the CEO of your life and giving over to Christ the direction that he has and the power to be an example so that others see that's the whole thing. It's about others. Baptism isn't about the person being baptized. They're just doing what God says. I remember one time, some people are just afraid to be baptized. They're not comfortable doing things in front of people. Um, and I remember one time my dad was baptizing a young man. He's probably, probably a teenager. I used to help my dad get ready for baptism, so I would stand on the steps of the baptistry. And, and watch people being baptized from, from the back. Because I'd go help my dad get ready and all of that. And put his waders on his robe and all of that. So anyway, I'll never forget this as long as I live. Dad starting to, or we are buried with Christ in baptism. And he gets about here and the guy reaches out and grabs the glass. Saying, no, no, no. He was, just, he was afraid of water. It was just a, a, a mighty strong fear of water. But the one thing that might help one understand about whatever you might be afraid of about being baptized is that it's not about you. It's about making a decision to do what God said. And Jesus said, be baptized. He gave us the example. He had his disciples baptized. Now, Jesus himself did not baptize people. But the Bible clearly says that his disciples did. I think one more thing needs to be said. And I, I say that because I've actually experienced this personally and I've seen it in other people's lives where a person that may be older than a child or a teenager realizes later in life that they really haven't been scripturally baptized. Because baptism should come after you know you've made your commitment to Jesus Christ. And I've seen person after person through my dad's ministry over the years come and say, you know, and this is my testimony. I was about seven, six or seven years old and I got dunked. I mean, I was doing the right thing. I was trying to follow my way to Jesus, but I really didn't have enough of an understanding to know the whys and wherefores. And I mean, I love Jesus. I've probably had more gospel exposure than most kids because of being in church three times a week for my whole life. 
But one night when I was 16, I realized I really had never resigned as CEO. And so I had to let Jesus take over. So I was baptized then, not just dumped. I was reading about a while ago when one uh, pastor that I was reading said, yeah, you just go down, a, <coughs> you go in uh, a dry center and come up a wet center. <laughs> but it's not real baptism unless you've been baptized after you say that. I, I wouldn't want to cast doubt on anybody's experience. But I just think it's interesting. It, it, it's something that that's noteworthy that I've seen in my life but other people do that and come and, uh, and later in life and say, you know, I need to be scripturally baptized. So if there's someone out there that has that desire and that realizes that that's what happened to them, then I just encourage you to consider doing it as soon as possible. But the most important thing of all is that the man on the middle cross says you can come. If you remember the story I told, so actually, week before, no, we had Gideon's last week. The thief on the cross didn't get baptized. <clears throat> Let's just say it wasn't a good time. But Jesus said to him face to face, today you'll be with me in paradise. Why? Because he confessed his faith. That's a pretty public situation, I would say. He even chided his cohort, partner in crime, if you will, the other thief said, have you no fear of God, man? Surely this is the Son of God, he said. He confessed his faith, and Jesus said, you'll be with me in paradise. I don't know about you, there's some discussion about whether paradise is really the final heaven or whatever. That's a discussion for another time, but let me tell you this. That's where Jesus went because he said you'll be with me in paradise and Jesus went where God was. That's what's important to me. I just want to be where Jesus is. I've chosen to follow him and in the last day maybe the last night when I see him face to face I'll be with Jesus. Yeah. You can know that in your heart and you, you can know that that is a certain thing in your life. That when your life ends on this earth, I love the way my friend Charles says it. He says, I might be walking across the street and some truck comes along and knocks the soul out of me. <laughs> I like that. Because soul doesn't die, it just goes someplace. Yeah. The best place to go is where Jesus is. You can go to hell if you choose, because it is a choice. Yes. So, if any of this I've said intrigues you, and you're concerned that maybe you haven't made things right with God in a salvation experience. Here's what you need to do. Acknowledge your sinful ways. Turn away from your sinful ways and repent of your sin. And ask Jesus Christ to give you a brand new life. You know what? He's waiting right now. He's waiting for you to say yes. He's waiting for you to resign. <laughs> as CEO of your life, if you will. He's knocking on the door of your heart. Amen. He's asking this. He's waiting. He 
he's eager to come in and give you the life that he died on the cross to give you. Here's much water. What hinders you from being baptized? Your sin. Father, thank you so much for giving us this incredible symbol. <coughs> it's a point we can look back to in our life. And realize that it was the day that I declared my faith to the world. So if you haven't done it yet, those of you who are here with me, those of you listening under the sound of my voice, declare your faith in Jesus today. Declare it. Ask him into your life. And all you really have to say, Lord, now's good. Now's good. Would you stand with me as we sing? I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided. Father God, we just come to you today praising you and thanking you for your mercy and your love and thank you for this declaration Dominic's made and the fine man that he's become and is becoming in you, Lord. And I thank you for that continuous walk that we all have with you. And I thank you, Lord, for this community of believers and the way that we lift one another up, Lord. And we're there for one another and I thank you that you give us that and that you've given the ultimate sacrifice in your son Jesus and it's in his name we pray today. Amen. 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 Amen.